Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. It's been a while since we've done a show between me and Jace Lejeune. This is Lee Burkeen, your host, uh, Louisiana Football Magazine, the Sports Scouting Report. We're going to promote the preview magazine very heavily in this show. We're going to promote our farewell to Jace. Jace is moving on in about a week um, to Green Pastures. Uh, He's had it green, but he's going to be greening it to wherever he's doing. He's going to be successful. He's, he's learned a lot with us. But we're going to talk about um, not where he's going, but we're going to talk about how he's just moving on. He's continuing to move up the ladder. And uh, I was here at one time in my life where I worked at Tiger Rag Magazine. I left, started my own business, and that's how I started Louisiana Football Magazine, um, working with them for two years and then the radio eating peanuts for 10 years. And I really mean that. I was eating bologna without bread. I had no money. And I might have told Jace that way back. But radio was really rough. It's trying to learn how to sell and everything. But this show today is going to be LSU recruiting, too. We're going to talk about Coach Kelly. I'm going to give my opinion. I'm not going to be negative. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, and and I'm, I'm a fan of Kelly. I'll talk about that. I'm a fan of him as a coach. Um, but the show will be mostly about LSU recruiting. We'll talk about Jace's experiences with the company. Um, he, what he's learned um, from going to high school games to helping us write high school previews to editing to, you know, doing some of these shows to just being a part of what we do right out of high school. Actually, during high school, he started with us uh, at Catholic High, uh, the Bears. So we're going to take uh, – I think we're just going to continue with this segment. But let's go ahead and start, Jace. Uh, first of all, it's been a quick six years. It has been. Really, it's really flown by, Lee, and uh, it's it's been a really good six years for me. Uh, it's definitely been a six years that I'll definitely remember, and you know, no matter where I go in my career, I, that's this is where I got my first start. This is where I got my first break, uh, you know, opportunity. So I I could not you know advance this far in my career without you, Lee, and I really appreciate you, Miss Dolores, Mister Carl, everybody. That's been involved with Louisiana Football Magazine for giving me this opportunity. Just coming out of high school, a young kid coming out of high school, and not a lot of people would be giving me the opportunity to do that. But, you know, I'm forever grateful for y'all. I remember, I've never shared this. I might have shared it with you way back. But I remember, especially prior to COVID, when we just didn't worry about being around a bunch of people. Um, I was hanging out at Plaquemine High School. I don't remember what week it was, but it was, I don't know, seven years ago. And I was just hanging out before the game and was talking to Paul DeStefano, who was the head coach at the time, your dad, a lot of guys in the, in the uh, coach's office. I was waiting for the Plaquemine game to start. And I can't remember who they were playing at night. It was a big game. And so everybody was eating sandwiches. And yeah, Subway sandwiches Subway right sandwiches by, right right. by Plaquemine High School, yep. And I remember your dad offering me a sandwich. And that's how we started talking. And he's like, you sure you don't want the sandwich? I'm like, well, no, I'm not. I don't eat mayonnaise. He's like, man, you're picky. Oh, he, yeah, we, we are. We're picky uh, eaters for and sure. So I didn't want – I was like, no, nah, and I, I think I ate or whatever. But I was like, no, nah, y'all, y'all eat them. They had tons of sub sandwiches and Cokes. And I think I got a Gatorade from them and stuff. And so we're just sitting back talking. And he said, man, do you have an opening with your company? And this is about three hours before the game. And Ron, your dad, said, um, he said, my son, you know, he's at Catholic High. He loves sports. He loves it. And I said, well, yeah. I said, I'm always looking for somebody that wants to, you know, better himself. And he said, well, look, I'm going to get him to call you next week. And usually it never happens. You don't hear from the kid. Well, you called me. You said, my dad told me to call you. And, I'm, and then you came in and interviewed, and that was six years ago. That was. Yeah, and I'm like, man, this guy is really into sports. He's he, we got to bring him in. And so, you know, and it, it, if you're listening to the show, we're actually looking for someone that's in college or going to college from high school that wants to be in the sports business. Um, Jace is uh, moving on, so we're looking for a replacement. And, Jace, what – tell everybody about if a kid's listening or a mom and dad's listening, what it's – what you've learned with us, and I know you mentioned it, but I mean, that's how it happened. I mean, your dad, mm-hmm. if your dad didn't give me your name, right? I don't know to, you know, to, to interview you. I mean, it was going to a game. 
You know? And I remember, like, growing up, you know, when I was a kid, and I remember Cox. I remember when we had Cox as a kid, and I remember probably when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I remember Dad going on your show. He was uh, he was at Tara High School at the time, and he had Paul Paul Harris, who was the quarterback, yeah. and Tara was really yeah. good. And I was like, never never really know, would know that would be working for you. But uh, I remember watching it as a kid, the show, a um, couple of times when I was younger, and yep, one day after, I, I say I think it was a Saturday after y'all talked, but I remember that, you know, he, y'all two did talk and mentioned about the spot being open, and yeah, yeah Dad yeah. mentioned to me, and I was like, yeah, definitely, I'd like to give him a call and you know and see what would happen there, and yep, when I first started because I was a senior at Catholic High, yeah, so yeah. just starting out, I was. There at the Cox Show, helping right, y'all out, right, making right. guarding the food, making sure nobody would right, eat the right. food and stuff. So <laughs> I remember just you know starting off like that, and then later on I graduated at Catholic High, and then that first summer was the first time really working on the magazine with you, and yeah. I've worked on it ever since. <laughs> what Jace is referring to with the food is that we didn't have a big enough staff, so when we were doing the show. Our, our green room was on the other side of the building. Yep. And we'd have a caterer bring food. And I remember Jambalaya Shop was one of them at one time. And we had different people. But the food, we needed somebody to watch <laughs> the food because the door wasn't locked. And it was some great food. Now, it might be all pizza or it mm. might be all jambalaya. The bread pudding at the, the jambalaya pudding. shop was really good. Yeah. I remember the bread pudding. So we wouldn't bring the guests back until maybe after the show and then before the show. But Jace's job to start out <laughs> was to guard, just to make sure that we had food left. Not that we didn't care if somebody in the building would eat it, but, you know, we uh, just want to make sure the food was there when we left because people were like, man, I want to go back and eat. Mm-hmm. We had this big room, and I remember Eric Coleman would come in. It was a big conference room. Yeah, yeah. it was. And yep. we would feed the whole Cox staff when it was over. You know, Niels, Breckoff. Mm-hmm. Um, Eric. Eric. Right. Um, you know, Jason Ferret mm-hmm. and uh, all of them. And, um Lori, uh, Fenta was she she was there at the time. A lot of great people, but yeah, the show went for twelve years, um, and then now we're doing this show, um, which is the podcast. Which I never thought I would do a podcast app, which I didn't even know what an app was till Jace was bringing. Yeah, it to because me. I, I believe it was around my second or third year. I'm thinking to myself, well, you go to all these high school games. You go to you know you cover football. You yeah. cover college and football and high school football. You you go all these games and watch it. Might as well talk about it because really yeah. the Cox Show it was really guest oriented. You right. know, so right. it was more about you know talking about their team, their program. But the podcast it gives you the opportunity to really talk about your own experiences and what you've seen from going to all these high school games. So it's just another outlet that yeah. we could use just to promote what you've been doing and promote what you've been seeing going to all these high school and college games all fall. And just so people know, the, the other thing that an intern would do, which was fun back in the day, is Jace would actually be the one that would have to go up front because the doors would lock after 5 <laughs> o'clock. So our guests would not always get there on time. And yep. so I had to get set up on the on the set. Mm-hmm. I couldn't go out there, so Jace was letting them in, and somebody had to be out there to say, okay, this is the right door to go through because there was different doors to enter the building. And sometimes the guests would get there right before the show started. I can't tell you how many near heart attacks I suffered just <laughs> waiting outside <laughs> right. the Cox Communication Building because we had to start, I believe, at what six thirty or a specific we, you had time. To be right on it, yeah. And they would come in driving by at fifty miles per hour in the parking lot at like six twenty seven. You know, oh, <laughs> like oh. so. I remember having a couple near heart attacks that, waiting that, on those guys. That's to come what's up. good about the podcast. You don't have the same. Not that you. You want to be late, but it's not the same stress, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, uh, you know. But yeah, I remember there were some times where some guests did not get there right on at mm-hmm. six thirty. <laughs> yep. And yep. I would be on a set like, where is that person? Where are they? You know. And that's the beauty about this podcast: what we have at their location, because we can start whenever we really want to. Right. Right. So that's another way, another positive outlook on this podcast. But if you're a dad listening, or you're a coach, and you have a son like a Jace. Um, that needs a, a college paid job, it's a paid college job, email me at lburkeen at aol.com 
or you can email Jace. Is going to be with us another mm-hmm. week. Yep. Jace, give him your email, and you can sure. forward him. It's pretty long, but uh, <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll spell it for you. It's it's my full name, so it's Jace J A C E Matthew M A T T H E W Lejeune L E J E U N E at gmail dot com. So Jace. Matthew Lejeune at gmail.com. And we have a young man that's going to be doing the podcast for us. It's done a great job. Let's mention him. Yeah, today. no one wag us back, yeah. and no one's a very talented guy. Another Catholic High guy. Another Catholic graduated guy. from Catholic High School as well. And we actually bumped into each other a whole lot this past spring because he does a lot of video camera work for VSN. And yeah. so, and he also directs the podcast too, uh, the video podcast that you see every Wednesday. So he does a great job of doing that. He's a bright young man, and he's got an incredible uh, future ahead of him. Yeah, and I'm going to mention this for any listeners. We're going to still be supporting Jace, and actually Jace and me will still be working together doing highlight tapes That's right. for kids. So, I mean, it's uh, it's not, not complete, but, I mean, mm-hmm. look, man, I mean, I think Jace one day is going to have his own show where it's going to be rolling. I mean, I'm 52. I think it took me to about 35 when it started just all kicking in, and I know I think he's got a chance to hit it before that. Um, in the business, whatever he chooses to do in that. But we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about LSU recruiting and Coach Kelly and just give you my thoughts on these out-of-state signees and and just thoughts on the whole. I know a lot of people are nervous. They did get a lot of big commitments. I've been in it for 30-something years. I'm just going to go by history and what I do know, and I'm going to be honest about stuff. But anyway, we'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You listen to Sports Scouting Report. I hope we didn't bore you with our, our life story <laughs> there. But anyway, I think it's good because we want to let everybody know how Jace became a part of our company. I think it's something great to share to young men. And, and, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there that have kids whose kids are – they love football they love or they love baseball. They love basketball. Yeah, and I spent, like you said, that college-paying job. I spent my whole entire college career and then some with you. Yeah, so it's, a, it's yeah. definitely a great right. way to find some work and have some fun doing it. I mean, what better way than to get paid than to actually cover sports, cover football. So, I mean, that's – I could find a whole lot of worse ways you can make money <laughs> right. than that. So right. it's it's definitely a really good opportunity for any young college guy that wants this opportunity. I want to mention a sponsor before we go into talking about recruiting with Coach Kelly LSU and the staff. I want to mention Treads and Care. Thanks for their support. Devin Holly, thank you very much. They're located at Park Place Drive on Hooper Road. In the town of Central, give them a call, 225-331-8144. They can take care of any of your tire needs. They have free pickup and delivery, which is always good for your vehicle to be picked up and returned. Uh, and they do other things besides tires. But give them a call, 331-8144. Devin Holly, they've been in business for a long time. I've known Devin for over 30 years. Jace, great guy, great people. Um Let's talk about LSU recruiting. Um, we'll talk about this for about three more segments, but here's my thoughts on it. We'll talk about the guys. I remember when Bill Lonsbarger was coach, and they took a lot of out-of-state guys. Um, and Because he was a Miami guy, he right? He was a Miami mm-hmm. guy, and he came in, and he recruited a lot of Florida guys. Mm-hmm. And I remember a bunch of those Florida guys never made it to campus. Um, and I'm just going by history here. Um, I remember when Mike Archer was the coach, um, same thing. He went Texas hard, and he signed more Texas guys than Louisiana guys. A lot of those guys did not make it to campus or didn't stick. Uh, Curly Hallman was more Louisiana, but that was a whole nother deal. I think that was just a bad time for him. They didn't have an academic center, all that good stuff. Uh, Nick Saban went Louisiana first. It worked out. Obviously, his first class was Michael Clayton, Marcus Spears, Marquise Hill. I mean, unbelievable what he did with with Louisiana recruiting. Was DeNardo a Louisiana guy? or DeNardo went kind of half and half, but I think he didn't really recruit New Orleans as much as he should have back in the day because New Orleans was really the pinnacle during that time. You didn't really have talent everywhere like you do now, but he didn't really focus on New Orleans heavily, and it cost him, and – DeNardo did not recruit Reggie Wayne properly or Ed Reed. 
you know, those are two NFL Hall of Famers. They would have came. I remember the kids back in the day. But anyway, LSU's always created something that might have just they could have avoided. Now, I don't want to say that it's done yet with Coach Kelly. What I'm getting to is it's never worked to sign a lot of out-of-state guys. It's never worked. And, look, they signed a lot of big-time guys lately, and, and, and I like their pedigree. I like their good students. That's the difference. These guys are 3'8", three, 3'5", three, in the classroom. These are, these are guys that would go to Notre Dame, and that's why I'm mentioning it. These are guys that he was recruiting for Notre Dame. So when you're a college coach, Jace, you recruit three classes at one time. And so he was recruiting this class to Notre Dame, even though it was two years ago. Yeah, that's why I'm not freaking out because he already had, you know, relationships with these kids based off right. his, you know, Notre Dame. So that's why, you know, I'm not really freaking yeah, out right now. I can't blame him for that. Right. You're going to recruit guys that you already know the mom and dads for two years. You don't have to recruit a new guy. Now, on the flip side, you don't go after Louisiana first. You got to pick one. So he's got to win. So if he wins, then all forgiven. If you don't win, then you're going to really have a hard time picking back up in Louisiana. I really think he'll win. Um, he's a good coach. Um, I think he was a great hire. I think the staff's a great coaching staff and not just a bunch of recruiters that brag. They don't brag. And when you don't brag, that means you know what you're doing. The last couple of coaches tend to brag a little bit. This coach keeps it quiet. He does it. If you notice, Kelly's not responding to the negativity. Yeah, he just he's working, and he's cleaned it up, and he's run off. You know, he's 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 doing it right. But I do want them to recruit. Hopefully, in the future, Louisiana first in spring, because I did talk to a lot of coaches in Louisiana, and they did not hit the Louisiana schools as fast because they were trying to go out of state first. Exactly. And yep. so, like I said, I'm a I'm a fan of Coach Kelly, and I think he's a great coach. I think he's a Hall of Fame coach, and. I think he's going to win at LSU. But, and also, here's the thing. A lot of people are freaking out on Jace. They're freaking out that LSU lost Arch Manning and Holstein and all these other guys, right? Tackett Curtis is right. probably not coming. But you know what? Let me just say this because I, I know these recruits, and Jace, you've been around it. We've talked to a lot of the coaches. It's just they never lost Arch Manning. Let me just say that. You don't lose a guy that you're never going to get. Exactly. Okay. And that's why I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised, so, oh, LSU lost right. Arch Manning. So you never had a chance with him anyway. So if you never had a chance, then you never lost him. And Holstein, you never had a chance because you never lost him. Holstein was not going to go to LSU because his that's brother where, and Walker Howard right. played in exactly. St. Thomas More, and they weren't going to even – they're not going to sit behind the same family again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nothing personal, just it is what it is. Uh, Tackett Curtis is a kid that if he goes out of state, it's because he's always wanted to possibly go Big Ten. And he's always he's always been a Big Ten guy. So yeah. that so it's know. just one of those things that Coach Kelly's getting hit by those three big guys. And I know Tackett hadn't committed to anybody yet. Mm -hmm. And they still have a chance for him. But if they do lose those three, I do think this will happen, Jace, when LSU starts winning. And Kelly can put his foot down and say, okay, look, you know, I'm not from here. I know I had the, the song and dance at the Assembly Center. It didn't work <laughs> out. You know, I tried to talk Cajun. All that will be forgiven when you start winning. And those guys that are committed to other schools from Louisiana, they'll, I think they'll decommit. I think the receiver from North Caddo will, will end up coming back in the fold yeah. of Marion Miller. Right, because he did announce his commitment to and, 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 Nebraska and yesterday. we were around Marion a month right. ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. I had lunch with him and his coach here in Baton Rouge, and I think the DB from Westgate, who's committed to Texas. And so with NIL, I'm just, I'm just trying to speak to listeners that get emotionally involved in recruiting. They think, like, the sky's going to fall and everything's blowing up. It's not that bad. With NIL, let me tell you what all the parents are telling me. These are parents telling me this. Since NIL started, a verbal means nothing now. Because with money on the table – Things change every day. Now, I'm not a fan of the portal, and I'm not a fan of NIL. You know that, Jace. And not a lot of guys my age are that grew up with the innocent football and just normalcy, right? It's not. It's just different. we got, we got to accept it, I it's guess. It's a different age and a different era, and especially with the conferences aligned yeah. to it. Like, it looks like it's going to be a two-conference power 
thing but, with the NFL. But, so it's but, changing. But because there's money, it, it, because here's what happens. You are going to be continuing to be offered money that's legal now. And LSU's getting their money later, and they're just starting to get all their money in. And we saw that at the end of this signing class, this past what, this past February, we saw a lot of that going down, a lot yeah. of the money deals going yeah. down. It's the first time we really got to see that so at the end. if LSU wins, here's what's going to happen. These guys that are not committed to LSU that are big time, they're going to relook at LSU because the money's going to be a little different. That's legal for NIL. And they're going to want to come here because LSU is saying, okay, Kelly is a winner. And I guess you just got to prove yourself. Saban had to prove himself. I remember people saying, well, Nick Saban's not from here. He's not. He's a Yankee. He's not from Louisiana. It does not matter. Who if cares? you win, If you win football games, you compete for championships, that's all that matters winning, around here. Winning solves problems. And I'm just saying, for if you're an LSU fan, I've been in recruiting over 30 years, and I know these kids. I know their parents. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's not that bad. And I really believe LSU is going to have a great year. And, look, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk about who they have committed and who they need to get commitments from in the end. And I think it's going to work out for them because I do think they're going to win. And I'm going to tell you why when we come back. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357 357- 7983. That's 357 7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lieber Keen, your host. Jace Lejeune's with us. This is his final show with us, man. It is. Um, uh, again, uh, any dad out there with a son coming up that needs a college job, a paid job in college, we're looking for a young man or, or a young female that's yeah, a college. young female yep you don't have to be just a football person it just like sports but it's a paid position for your whole college um and then uh, i want to thank john harvey toyota uh take a minute to tell you about harvey Otos. if you need a newer used car jace john harvey toyota harvey subaru lexus of shreveport bozier city support them low prices honest people tell them lee sent you they really love our high schools they love lsu they love the state at all the colleges. John Harvey Toyota. Um, Jason, I want to mention real quick why I think Kelly's going to win. I see th- the leadership back with the program. I see the team united. I see the talents there. I see so much talent in Nussmeyer quarterback. I see the running game being better. The backs are better. I see the O-line will become a good line. The D-line's got a chance to be awesome. The linebacking core's got a chance to be great. The, the DB wide receiver core is really good. It's off the chart. Mm-hmm. And the DBs they brought in, they brought in so much talent at DB that it's going to work out. So, I mean, they're actually going to be okay. Like starting-wise, talking about the 22 guys, they're probably just as top as anybody else yeah. in the country. I'm just – my biggest thing is they have to stay healthy through this year, yeah. probably more than any other year. Like everybody they're playing. So, I mean, you know, they – too, our fans think too much of the LSU, but what about Ole Miss? They're not deep. Mississippi State's not deep. Arkansas is not deep. A and M. I know they had one great class, but they lost twenty eight seniors. They're not deep. Uh, you're not going to see A and M dominate college football with a freshman class. It's not going to happen. I, it didn't happen with LSU's freshman classes. I remember when Tyron Matthew and Mo Claver and all them left at one time. LSU finished number one recruiting, and it they bombed. Hey, just a couple of years ago, remember they got the number one receiver in the country, and Malachi Dupree got learned for that yeah. number one player in the country. They what they finished that twenty fourteen year like eight and eight and four. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I think LSU has got a great chance to shock a lot of people because they're going to be a disciplined team, and discipline beats undisciplined teams, especially when it's even talent. I think Nussmeyer is going to be a phenomenal quarterback. I'm not anything bad on Brennan. I just think Nussbauer is going to take the job by week one or two because he's got that stuff, and he's a leader, and they're all starting to, like, migrate to him. And from what I'm hearing, he's the guy. He's going to be phenomenal. He's like a taller version of Johnny Manziel. Uh, He was just 17 last year. Jace, he was an early enrollee. You know what 17's like. It's not you're not ready to be the guy at LSU at 17. No, you're not. You need you definitely need a year to just learn everything, especially a player like 
Garrett because he is a gunslinger. You know, he wants to go for the deep ball, the touchdown every single play, and sometimes he has to he has to realize you can't go broke, you know, gain the profit or taking the profit. So that was something he had to learn early on. But talent wise, he he has the biggest ceiling out out of anybody else who's bound at quarterback right now in the LSU. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're finally gonna talk about the commitments. I'm going to talk about Trey Holly, how he's so important to the, the class being from Louisiana. We'll be right back with the Sports Scouting Report. Jace Lejeune, Lee Burkeen, we'll be right back. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back. I want to thank another sponsor, Gage. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today, locally, 225-753-4243, and help your business get better connected with Gage. Uh, Great company, Greg Wood. They're going to be really busy installing uh, generators in homes uh, on the on the side of houses because we're getting to that part. You of the know, year. it's that important time of the year for Gage right now, especially with hurricane season coming along. Yeah, they're a technology business, but they also sell these really uh, cost saving generators that they have, and uh, I bought one. Yeah, I know it's in July. I know you probably need better get on it right now. Mine it takes be, a while to come mine, in. Mine will be installed right before the next hurricane or yeah. right before the next storm, but. Uh, support Gage, great people, Greg Wood and his family, Greg Sr., Greg Jr. Um, want to mention the class. All right, so Trey Holly is the one of the, the, the few Louisiana commitments so far. It sounds like he's the voice of this recruiting class. Like yeah. it was last year, like Walker Howard and Will Campbell were the voices of yeah. the recruiting class. This year's recruiting class, Trey Holly is the guy. Trey has run for uh, almost 8,000 career yards. Uh, 108 touchdowns. Now, he, he didn't play his senior year yet. He might end up with 160 touchdowns. He might end up with 10,000 yards. By the time week three comes around, he should be the all-time leading rusher in Louisiana high school football history, and that's saying a lot. And, and if you missed our podcast a month ago, he's the most mature kid you'll ever see. Very impressive kid. Union, Very impressed. Union Parish in Farmerville, Louisiana, North Louisiana, right outside of Ruston. He's He looks like Kevin Falk. Built like him, yeah. Built like him, um, and and I think he's going to be as good as – I'm going to go ahead and say it. He's going to be a guy that's going to be a program changer for LSU because he's so committed to to football. You know, a lot of good recruits, Jace, they're talented, but they're not as committed or they're not they – He's, don't, he brings he's all in on LSU. Yeah. And so. actually, he's been – like tweeting out if you follow his Twitter, he's been tweeting at what at Tack and Kept Curtis or at so Shelton Sampson, like right. hey, come to Baton Rouge with us, let's right. go win a national championship. That's how committed he is to LSU. Yeah. You don't have to worry about him yeah. be committing anywhere. So here's here's the way this is gonna go down. There's three LSU targets they're not gonna get. I don't care if LSU wins a national championship. Three are not coming back to LSU. The two Newman kids to ba- Texas. Yeah, the two Newman kids. Um, Arch Holstein. Manning and Holstein, and right. the, the tight end from Newman, who's a big time tight end, but him and Arch are tight. And he committed to Texas the week before right. Arch right. committed. So, so those three are not coming back in the fold. They never were. So they never lost them. Now, here's the deal: the tight end and the tight end. Um, I tell you what, that the, he's the number one tight end in the state. I think from Newman. I think he's a big time. Oh player. yeah. I remember seeing him with you at St. Charles Catholic. I was like, who is this kid? He's phenomenal. I thought yeah. he was a senior. He was like only a sophomore but then. But he never had an interest in LSU. So, I mean, they mm-hmm. never were going to – they didn't lose him. So, But I think the DB from Westgate, who's a phenomenal talent. Yeah, he's a must-get for him. I think he'll come back in the end if LSU wins. And I think that – or Marion Miller will come back in the end. Yep, you know? right. And I think a lot of these big-time prospects in state will get more evaluation from Kelly because they didn't know them that well. He knew the guys he, he was recruiting from Notre Dame, like the Jackson kid from Minnesota who committed to LSU. He's a big tight end in, um, 6'4", 250. Um, and the only commit so far from this class is a guy – the last Louisiana guy he signed was Logan Diggs, the running back right. from Rum- Rummel. He right. actually – we got a commit from – 
Archbishop Brown, my cornerback, Ashton yeah. Stamp. So. Yeah. And Ashton didn't even play last year. Yeah. And I talked to Coach Monica at Rommel. I mean, he's got a lot of talent, but he didn't he didn't play last year because of an injury. Um, but I think they got some work to do in Louisiana, but I think they're going to be okay. Tackett Curtis, it's probably like a 20% chance of getting him. Um, again, Tackett might just be seeing what Kelly's going to do, you know, just to see how this is all going to evolve. Not you don't have to win a national championship. That's not what I'm saying. If they can win nine, ten games yeah, this year, to I mean, show that the program right. is uh, is stable, is stable, and that Kelly's the guy, and that he's, and I think he will. I think they will go ten and three. I'm the guy out there that thinks they're going to win ten or more, um, because this, because the, Kelly is a disciplined guy that knows how to run a program, and wherever he goes, he wins, and he does let his coaches coach, which that's not something we've seen at LSU the last few no. years. And the only thing he does is he likes to get involved at tight end and O-line. That's where they need help, and he's good at it. It sounds simple, huh? Let your coach is coach, but, yeah, but he, but he, <laughs> the last ten years hasn't been that case. And he runs the program. He checks on these guys academically. He holds them accountable in the weight room. He holds them accountable every day. Does that remind you of somebody? Nick Saban. Uh, the last two coaches, weren't, they weren't that way. They want to be their buddies. You can't buddy up with an 18-, 20-year-old kid. They want you to be, like, the disciplined guy. Um, and Kelly, he is that. And and look, there's not another coach in SEC besides him, but Nick, mm-hmm. yep. um, running it like that. And exactly. And, and so I think they're going to be okay. We're going to take a break when we come back. We're going to talk about some of the other commitments in the in the class. They're all out of state mostly early on. There's only two so far, and that's the Stamps guy we talked we talked about him. Stamps and Trey Holly. They're the only yeah. two Louisiana commits right now. And we'll we'll talk more about it when we come back. Grossavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grossavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. Jace Lejeune here is our co-host for talking LSU recruiting and also um, just, you know, thoughts on that the sky's not falling for LSU. I mean, people are freaking out. I want to thank uh, Medine's Collision Center for being a big sponsor. They're on Kincaid Avenue in Baton Rouge. Let the Medine family help you. They'll get you right back uh, on the road. They, they're great, great people. Uh, amazing team at Medine's Collision Center. Chris Medine, Dominica Medine. Their son, Jesse Medine, is the general manager. Give them a call at 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Area code 225. They'll help you with all your uh, your body work. All the bo- You know, if you have a fender bender or something, give them a call. Um, great people. Been in business for a long time. Jay's getting back to LSU recruiting. Um, you know, there's a lot of out-of-state guys. They just got a commitment from a DN out of Maryland. Yeah, who's that's their number one guy number right one now. Guy who's, mm-hmm. who's, who's from a fame program. That's where Jordan Tolls went. Okay. He was a current safety for LSU. Um, Jackson Howard. Jackson Howard from Minnesota. I mean, Minnesota, they haven't landed a, pro- a prospect from Minnesota yeah. um, ever. <laughs> right. Um, but that was a Notre Dame recruit. They've been recruiting him since Notre Dame and the Maryland kid. And they got a commitment from Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, big defensive tackle, defensive end. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, there are a lot of these guys are linemen. So Coach Kane is doing his job recruiting D line. He's kicking butt D line. But yeah, four defensive linemen commits so far. I would hope they're going to show some interest in Mickey Reed, the D tackle from Menden, mm-hmm. who's phenomenal. Yeah, um, you're really high on them. Six four, three hundred, runs a four nine, looks four five. He's a huge guy, can move. Um, loves LSU. Um, he will go to a TCU or an Ole Miss if they don't offer him. So kind of like Sledge from last year that's from right. Neville. That's yep. right. You don't want that kind of guy leaving the state. And there's a lot of guys in this class coming up. When we do, I know me and Jace are finishing the all Louisiana teams for the North and the South issue. There's a lot of diamonds in the rough that are not projects, but they're they're good players that LSU hopefully will look at again. Even quarterbacks, even though they're missing on all these quarterbacks, there's some really good quarterbacks. Not just Arch Manning. Not just 
Not just Holstein. There's some good quarterbacks coming out this year. Well, for sure. Ever since I've been here, I mean, you you can say where the, where this year ranks as far as, like, other years. But definitely the six years since I've been here, this has been not only the best, but the deepest quarterback class that I've seen in the state. I mean, incredible. You got the Scotlandville. Uh, Zach Zet is uh, Zay Ta- Tasset. Yep. Tasset is mm-hmm. an incredible player. Yep. I mean, people that no one's talking about him, but he's six three, two twenty, runs four five, cannon arm, lefty can move. Uh, Ricky Collins at Woodlawn. Ricky Collins. Yep. But you got three of them in Shreveport. You got three mm-hmm. really good players at Northwood High School. You got a great quarterback there. Right. Huntington. Huntington. You got a great quarterback at Benton. Gray, Benton. Gray Walters. Yep. I mm-hmm. mean, there's a lot of quarterbacks in Lafayette, Abbeville. Shelvin's a great one. Right. Um. There's a lot of great ones that are, and they're all big guys. They're all six two to six five. Watcher has a good one, yeah, and Whitfield. the cars got a good one. So I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's deep. They don't have to go out of state to find if they just want to sign another quarterback. Um, and everybody just thinks it's Arch Manning, and and a Holstein. It's not just those two. No, but it's people not. People just get pegged on these stars. They get too hooked into that. Um, at receiver, there are other receivers in Louisiana that are really good. There's a ton of them. There's always a ton of receivers. Mm-hmm. And there's a ton of DBs. Um, and then there's some sleeper linebackers, O-linemen. We've got some sleeper O-linemen in the state. Um, I think De La Salle, New Orleans, has three Yeah, they, that, that could go. It sure looks like that they're going to have the best offensive line in high school football this year. I mean, if you listen to the show, there's nine kids coming out next year that are six, seven, three hundred playing O-line that are good players. Like Caden Jones from De La Salle, six foot He's like eight, six, eight, yeah. 310 and runs a five flat. There's a, there's a six, eight lineman at Natchitoches Central that's 300 mm-hmm, yep. that runs a four, eight, four. Natchitoches Central has an offensive lineman and a defensive yeah. lineman that are going are to be really – they're power five guys, both of them. Tredarius Brown, who's committed to Texas Tech. Texas Tech. He is big time. He's six three two ninety runs a four, eight. I've seen him play. And look, I'll put my hand up. I'll put it on, you know, like the, the – I'll put everything on it. The kid is big time. So there are players in Louisiana that LSU can go back to, and there's no reason not to sign 10 Louisiana kids. Now, here's what I think is going to happen, Jace. I think some of these out-of-state guys are not going to show up in the end, and I think Louisiana guys are going to replace some of them. But it's something he had to do. Kelly had to go out, finish the guys he was recruiting at Notre Dame. Again, he right. knew their parents. But when it comes down to you know brass tacks come February or early signing day, I don't think all these out-of-state guys, it never happens. They always change your mind. They start worrying about 1,000 miles away Mm -hmm. or 1,500 miles away. I'm not saying they're not going to get all of them. I'm just saying that it never works out that way. So, If you think about it, look at all the last national championships that they won. I mean, they were led by Louisiana guys. So if you want to win championships, you have to get in state. You have have to get Louisiana guys that want to be there. I think it's going to end up being – 10 to 12 Louisiana guys, and then from here on out, he'll get 12, 13. I don't think you're ever going to take over 13. Again. Yeah, that's about where you want to be at, you know. Ha- get half your guys in state and the other half elsewhere. And then they're going to save scholarships for the portal. So there's always going to be five or six. Now, he won't save 15 like this past year, but. It was necessary what he had to do yeah. this year. And there's no limit on the class. Like, you can sign 50 kids, but that means you got to run off some to get to 85. That's how it works now. So if you're listening to this and you're not really aware of that, the NCAA gave a one-year ruling that as long as you're at 85 scholarships, you can sign as many as you want mm-hmm. this year. As long as you have 85. And I really is – this is going to hurt for some some players. If you have a scholarship, you better be working. Yeah, you you may not get that scholarship next year. Because if you're not in, in good standing, they're going to go, hey, man, you're out. Because I can bring in 10 linebackers this year. I can replace all my linebackers, or I can bring in all my all new O line. I think that's a good move by the NCAA, just because the power has translated like totally to the players. So with that rule, it gives some of that power back to the coaches. It does. It's like if you're not doing your job, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Then we're going to just bring yeah, some NIL or not, it doesn't matter. That's when that one year scholarship really becomes a one year scholarship. And look, you might see. Nick Saban take advantage of it. He might sign 40. He's right. On, he's on, somehow he's been signing 40 the last five years. <laughs> I don't know how he gets away with yeah, it. Yeah, I know. He gets them to walk on, and they're all Americans. You know? 
blue shirt, gray shirt, mm-hmm. whatever, he gets them to come in. If you see his walk-ons at Alabama, they're all world walk-ons. Like, they turn down small D1 schools, and people don't realize that's – Yeah, the cornerback a couple years ago that got drafted and everything was all SEC. He was a walk-on for him for yeah. Alabama. Yep. All their quarterbacks are from, like, Pennsylvania, California. They're all all state three years in a row. Um, and then they leave and go start a year somewhere. But I think Kelly will be okay, and I think the staff – now, I would like to see the O-line coach deliver O-linemen. Coach yeah, Brad Dave, Dave. Coach yeah. Davis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like him. Oh, well, he's a good coach. But yeah, not a doubt. LSU but. hasn't recruited O line very well the mm-hmm. last two years, and um, I really hope that he lands his guys. Now, Coach Kane is really looking like a guy that can recruit, and and then we'll see what Polian does in the end with his national recruiting. We'll see what Sloan does with his Louisiana ties. Because so far, I mean, your commits right now. You talk about Coach Kane doing a great job. He's got what. Four four defensive linemen committed right now, and then defensive backs. You got two safeties, got a cornerback. No, two cornerbacks. So four DBs, four D linemen, and then one running back and one wide receiver. So that, that's yeah. what you got right now. And we'll see what the uh, Steeples does from Missouri. Now he lost his former DB from his old high school, was going to Notre Dame. That's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but. The other DB coach, Jace, is from Dallas. So that's why they got the Texas right, commitments yep. DB. Ryan Yates, yep. And we'll see what Frank Wilson does with Louisiana. You know, he hasn't locked in all these guys. And I know St. Aug, Tyree Adams is a guy to keep track of, an O-lineman from St. Aug. He's legit, 6'6", 290. I do think he'll end up in the class. Frank's offered him. Uh, there are seven St. Aug seniors that are good enough to go to LSU, seven. And I know Frank would like all seven, but I know else like, <laughs> you know that's not right. Yeah, I'm gonna take all seven. And I do think the backs kid, the defensive end that you told me just committed, Edna Carr. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's a he's an LSU guy. I think that they might go back on. Right. He committed to TCU. Yep. Yeah. Six three, two eighty, twenty sacks last year, ninety tackles as a DN. Um, so, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of guys they can go back to. again. If and you're he's going to wear the number seven for in the car. You can talk about how good in the car has been. That number seven jersey goes to, like, the most important player. So, that shows yeah. you what kind of player Bax is. And that's over the MB- MVP, their quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yep. Bax is a stud. I mean, right. I'm shocked that Kane's not trying to get well, – Again, he's already. He's, I know he's already got like four or five of them already. But, so, but they did get a D tackle from Edna Carr last year. So you would yeah. think that Bax would be uh, right. wanting to come, right? Um, join his D line buddy, from mm-hmm. Edna Carr, uh, Taji Hill. Yep, yeah, Taji, mm-hmm. and then Bax and Taji. Can you believe how good they were together on the D line? Yeah, at, at Edna and I think Carr. they got another. They got another Edna Carr defense mm-hmm. lineman that's walking on, but he's good enough to. When they get a scholarship too, I'm so just that, I'm just gonna say this: if they get a Marion Miller to come back in the fold with Shelton Sampson, they got the two best receivers in the country. They don't need to get anybody no, else. I, I would just sign <laughs> those two guys. They don't, uh, and then just worry about OD line, tight ends, DBs, especially tight ends too. They they definitely need some tight ends coming into the program. Yeah. And I, they're they're in on about ten of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll see what happens there. And look, never forget the transfer portal as long as it's wide open. You could see maybe a Louisiana native or two come in next year as a time. Yeah, it's free agency every single year. It's yeah. going to be free agency every single year. Nobody's guaranteed to stay at their school for the next year. We're going to take a break, have one more quick segment, and then uh, talk to Jace a little bit more and then see what we want to just do a finale in the final segment. We'll be right back. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Welcome back. I want to thank one more sponsor of ours, a big sponsor, Gross Savant in uh, the Lake Charles area. Give them a call. Go to their website. If you want to go hunting, fishing, uh, echo tours, Gros Savant is the place to go. I went fishing there a year and a half ago, right before COVID, and I caught almost 100 bass in four hours. And this is not a fishing story. It's not like something I made up. Joe Abergama would back me on that. Me and Joe went to former LSU Center, um, and in four hours, we were done fishing. Had 100 bass 
in our boat, okay? The other boat caught almost 80. Uh, and, and the stay overnight in the lodges, you eat like a king. I mean, they have chefs, and they tell you, what do you want to eat? And I mean, it's incredible, Jace, to get away with your son, your family, bring a client. Look up Gros Savon around Lake Charles, Louisiana. It's, it is the sportsman's paradise for Louisiana. I need to go again. I need it. I need to go again. I need to get away. Maybe that might be my two-day vacation. There you go. I know you've been talking about it. Yeah. Um, Jace, getting back to LSU recruiting, um, again, the sky's not falling. Um, It's July. It's July. (laughs) I mean, we got till February, so we'll be good. I would disagree or say it's different if there was no NIL. But since there's NIL – LSU can come up with the money A and M's doing in Texas in about two months. I'm just going to throw that out there. So they were just a little behind on it, but none of these guys are signed. They just jumped on whatever they got, and get you can always change. It's not about how you start. Like right now, I think they got them what twenty or sixteen. I'm not yeah. sure where, but it's all about how you fish. And Nobody's looking where you are in right. July. They're going to look at where you are in February. And it'll all work out. I don't think all these out of state guys will come in the end. They're just trying to get everybody he recruited to Notre Dame. These are guys he's been recruiting to Notre Dame for two years. And I can't blame Kelly and Coach Polian to continue to recruit a kid that he's known for two years and the dads right. and the moms. Because he knows them. He's built relationships with them. Yeah. I mean, you have to continue to talk to those guys, and it shows you that you really bought, you really buy into that kid even more since you move on to a, a yeah. different program. So that sells it to them even more. It is a little different than maybe former coaches recruiting out of state, not no hardly knowing them. You know, just trying to get them to come. There has to be a train. I mean, you know, and it's not like Coach Kelly is familiar with this area. He's not. So it takes a little bit of adjusting to do to get to really know the area, to know the recruiting and where the good spots are. So since he's really been recruiting like the Midwest and West Coast and all that, that's more been more his area. The the one complaint I've heard from several high school coaches is they would like to see LSU put Louisiana first in the spring. Like, do Louisiana first in spring, then go out of state. And I know they got to go out of state. You can't do every – You only, can't – yeah, you can't. There's only 10 coaches to go to 1,000 schools. But in the future, I think they need to go to Louisiana high schools first in the spring. And I think you. I think he will do that. And I think they'll do it. They'll but, do that. But, again, that, that'll be smoothed over. Um, North Louisiana does need a little more attention. I think there's more talent there than people – and people realize, realize yeah. I've seen the talent. There's a lot of talent in North Louisiana. I call it the diamonds in the rough, like the jewels. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more teams in South Louisiana. There's more teams that are, you know, playing in it, but there's more talent right now. The quality, the quality is there, and yeah. it, it, be, it may it will probably be more quantity in South Louisiana, but the quality is there for yeah. the players that they do have in North Louisiana. And, and right now, believe it or not, Jace, the, the city of Lafayette, is ruling South Louisiana for talent. Just look, just go to the Dome every year. It You'll used, see it. It's just it, nothing but Lafayette area teams. It, it used to be New Orleans only. In a little Baton Rouge, right? Little Lake Charles. Yeah, it used to be really New Orleans and then like Monroe, like North Louisiana. Right. But now, now it's you, Now it's everywhere. Now it's like North Louisiana, New Orleans, and Baton Rouge. Lafayette, Lafayette is big. Lafayette's huge. Yep. And it's it's in Lafayette. It's the outskirts of Lafayette. But if you want to go get a big time player, you go to Acadiana High School. And they're all like in a five Kristen. minute like right. radius. How about go to Como? Malik Neighbors went to Como. Mm-hmm. Now on his profile it says Southside, South but, but he never, he never, he played, never played, there. played there. But Como is in the district, and nobody talks about how Malik Neighbors. He's the next great one at LSU. Yes, that receiver. He's a stud. He's a stud. I would just recruit the district that Barb's in, and like Charles would Acadiana. And, and sulfur and all. And by the way, we got two safeties on our preseason defense from sulfur. Mm-hmm, exactly. And that's never happened before. And speaking of that, before we end the show, Jace, the all Louisiana team, we got all our pitchers in. Yep. I did the North. You helped me with the South. We tag teamed it. We got them all in. What do you think of all the kids? There's a lot of talent again. There is a lot of talent this year, and just every year you look at it. I mean, specific positions you know coming in. Like, you know every year the receivers, there's going to be receivers go every year, DBs, skill position players. But this year, 
everybody's kind of sleeping on the linemen this year. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of really good linemen this year because if you look at Louisiana, the reputation is wide receivers, running backs, DBs, Louisiana has them. Yeah. But my thing this year is linemen, quarterbacks, usually the positions that, you know, everybody says Louisiana doesn't really have in years past, but they, they have it this year in quarterbacks and linemen. They're sleeping on the quarterbacks, too, mm-hmm. because everybody's just stuck on Arch Manning and Holstein, who were bonafide. They're both going to be in the NFL, no doubt. Walker Howard will be in the NFL. But there are seven other quarterbacks coming out this year that will be have an NFL shot, and four in North Louisiana. And one's in Baton Rouge at Scotlandville. Nobody's only talking about it. And the other one, you know, at Woodlawn, they're talking about him, Collins. Right, but there are six other just as, six other kids just as good as Collins in the state, but you don't hear of anybody outside of Collins, Holstein, and Manning. Right, besides those those three, and there are but there I'm, are a lot of good ones. And I'm gonna tell year. you, I'm gonna say it again: the D tackle from Natchitoches Central, Tadarius Brown, is a man child. I watched Tadarius Brown play as a sophomore, and he was six three two seventy, and he was chasing down running backs running four four. And he was he looked like an NFL Saints all pro D lineman. He looked like the DN for the Saints that's been there for thirteen years. What's his name? That's from Cal. Oh, uh, Cam Jordan. Yeah, he looked like a young version of Cam Jordan. And yet he's he he was look, Texas Tech gets it. They got him committed. And they're like, Wow, how did we come to Louisiana and get this guy? Lee, I would drive to Natchitoches Central myself just to see practice. Tyler Johnson, that big tackle. Six, and Tredarius Brown just go Oklahoma drill one-on-one in practice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's scary. Forget who's been putting out the players. Go where the players are. Mm-hmm. And NACTA Central hadn't been known to put them out lately, right. but these are two studs. And the quarterback's a stud. Mm-hmm. Really good really good playmaker. So it's not the norm. It's it's three. And Tyler Johnson, 6'8", 310 of muscle, lean. Uh, and look, I think Marion Miller's the best player in the state. I think Shelton Sampson's going to be a future pro. And I think uh, Trey Holly is right up there with a Marion. But I, I think a Marion. He's new like, for Catholic highs. You should have been running backs every yeah, year. But yeah. this first time to say a wide receiver yeah. is going to be and I think the guy the, over there. I think the DB from Westgate is legit. Um, that I'll, dude can play it. Anything. He you is, put him in any any position, he, he would be a, he would thrive at it. What blows my mind, he didn't go to Alabama. Like, he didn't commit to Saban. He committed to Texas. And that's after you heard about Arch. He – yeah. Committed to Texas. But, again, there's a lot of time between now and December and the NIL bank account and all that stuff's legal, and LSU will be able to offer whatever they offered uh, in the next month or two. I think all that money's kind of just took a little while to build up for them. Yeah, if they can find a way to get Derek Williams and then get the two Omarion and Shelton, I think they'll be in a good spot. Omarion's on a different planet to me talent-wise. He's Jamar Chase part two. He's a mean dude that's quite, that's dedicated to the game, and day one he'll be a star. He's just – you know, there's a lot of stud receivers. That's the problem at LSU. You look but, at LSU, I mean, all of those guys but, can start. But then there are the, like, once-in-a-lifetime chases that come out that mm-hmm. are just on another planet. Omarion Miller is on another planet. And here's the deal. I don't see Nebraska doing great this year with Frost. This is Frost is like prove it yeah. like this is it. Yeah. This is the year. Yeah. And I know I know Mickey Joseph's over there from LSU. He's got a relationship with Marion. I know that. I respect that. Okay. He's but it also good. depends on what Frost does. Because right. if he doesn't win, Mickey won't be right. there long. So this is Frost's fifth year, I think, Jace. Fifth? Yeah. Or six. I'm gonna look at it for sure. But it's it's this is the it's year. prove it. It's a prove it year for like, sure. If if he loses five, he's gone. Yeah, you know, he he didn't get a seven five year to come back or eight and four. He he will be gone if he loses four or five games. This is his fifth year. Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah. they'll bring in another coach. Hasn't had a winning season yet in Nebraska. And they're they're like trying to get everybody right now. He need he desperately needs to go to a bowl, at least a bowl game in order to like feel good about himself. Well, you can go to the Sun Bowl at seven and five, but I don't think that's right. going to save the job. You know. Right, yeah. but knowing that they've won, they went like three games last year. Yeah, and here's so, the deal. Who says Sarkeesian's going to win at Texas? Especially just in two years when Arch is there, they're going to be playing the SEC. So and we'll see who how they, much they can win there. Who does Texas start out with this year? Alabama. <laughs> at Texas, huh? Yeah, at Texas, yep. So if they lose to uh, Nick week one, they're already behind the eight ball. 
Mm -hmm. They can't lose another game, or they're not going to be in a national contention. So I'm just I'm just saying a lot of things can happen. You know, Circassian might bomb, Frost might not win. Um, things change in LSU. But I think Texas is smart enough to know. Okay, we're getting Arch Manning, and Sarkeesian's a big reason why Arch Manning is coming over there. We're not going to fire Sarkeesian when no, Arch is coming over. But, but he might not look like right, the guy that's right. going to be the guy. Yeah. You know, it might, like, mm, you know, all that, uh, what do they call it? All those tickles and all the excitement's gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, hire a coach. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then two years in, you're like, mm, wait a minute. This is a second year, right? The second second year, year coming up. Yep. If he goes seven and five, eight and four, second year. All that excitement's gone. And really, the Big 12 is, you know, I mean, we'll say, I mean, Baylor's coming off of winning the conference, and Oklahoma State's there. Oklahoma has a new coach. And Think, wrap this around your head, Jace. In two years, Walker Howard will probably be the starting quarterback for LSU. Holstein will probably be the starting quarterback for Alabama. Alabama. And Arch will be in the SEC with Texas. Texas. Yep, you'll have three starting SEC quarterbacks, all from Louisiana. In the SEC. Yep. Wrap that around your head. And, and who knows, like, if uh, some of these other guys that we're talking about, they might slip into a Mississippi State or an Ole Miss. A Vandy. And a Va you know, a Vandy. Kentucky. Right, right. There's a lot of quarterbacks in Louisiana. They're sleeping on them. And I think LSU might end up with one of them in the end. And again, it might not be Ricky Collins. It might be one of the other quarterbacks we're mentioning. We're going to go ahead and end the show. Be sure to go to our website. We're, at, we're going to the printer in about two weeks. Jason and me have to look at the magazine next week. That's right. Uh, Carl Accardo changes. is putting it together as we speak. If you're a mom and dad and your kid starts high school football and Coach gave us your name or I knew about the kid, he's probably in the preview magazine. Uh, all 300 and something schools are in there, MIS included, mm -hmm. the ones that we could get in touch with. Yeah. And then the colleges, Jace wrote the 12 colleges. I wrote LSU. Um, and then we'll uh, – It'll come out late August, probably the first week of September when it goes in the mail. Go to our website, LAFootballMagazine.com, to pre-order a magazine. You could do a digital. You could pre-order a digital, a south or a north, or a north and a south. And on social media, we'll actually next week, that'll be one of the things we'll do next week, is we'll promote a lot of it. We'll have the covers up on our Twitter pages, and we'll, we'll give you the link to where you can order the magazine because a lot of people have been – asking like where can we get the magazine where yeah. can we order it so we'll post the uh, the link on our social media so go follow us on facebook on twitter and around you know early next week you'll get the link to where you can order the magazine well jason it's been fun i know you're gonna be with us an another week yep but uh um, last week next week it's uh surreal and it's been these six years have really flown by and i definitely recommend anybody out there that's entering college a sophomore junior around that in college, girl or boy, uh, that this is a really good opportunity to, especially if you want to get involved with sports, you know, uh, with whether it's just covering them or going to sports management, uh, anything like that. If you want to be involved with sports, this is definitely a really good class uh, organization to be with. And, you know, I, I can't, you know, thank Lee and uh, his family enough for the opportunities that they've given me. I'm forever in debt to them, and uh, I really, want, once again, I'm just very blessed to have this opportunity uh, the last couple of years and to be with Lee this long and having to deal with me this long. You know, that's another <laughs> thing, too. But I definitely appreciate Lee and uh, Mr. Dolores and the whole uh, rest of the Louisiana Football Magazine family for uh, welcoming, it, welcoming me in with open arms. Jace did a great job. He's uh you know, he's, uh, he's going to do great things. Like I said, I, you know, he's doing what I did. You know, I went to several different companies and learn, 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 just keep going up and up. And that's another thing, too, I want to point out, because the last year or two, uh, not only have I been able just to work with Lee and work on the magazine, he's, he's allowed me to explore in other areas. I mean, he's allowed me to, you know, go back to Southeastern and call a couple football games for him. He's allowed me to, during the fall, especially when they yeah. you know, some. You know, that's definitely a time that he would need me to go out and go to a lot of high school games and everything. He allowed me the opportunity with VSN and to go out and broadcast games there. So uh, I, I appreciate Lee for allowing me to, you know, explore other options as well. Got it. Got Chase one more week after this. So we got, he's going to help us with the shows and uh, we got some good shows left. We do. And go to our, look, if you can't spell his name or mine, email us. 
Go to LAFootballMagazine.com and just email Go to us. LAFootballMagazine.com, too, because I know we're promoting about uh, uh, getting a guy in here for college, uh, during college, and all that information is actually going to be on our website probably at the end of today yeah. or tomorrow. Yeah. So make sure to go to LAFootballMagazine.com. We'll have my contact, Lee's contact. Uh, if you're in college, if you want to get paid some money on the side, uh, during your college career and trying to help jumpstart your career as well. This would be a good job to put on your resume to start off. So make sure to go to LAFootballMagazine.com. You'll have all the information on how to get in touch with Lee and myself in, in case if you want to, you know, start working at Louisiana Football Magazine. Great college job if you like sports. We're going to end the show. Again, go to the sports, our website, LAFootballMagazine.com, to pre-order if you're a mom or dad. Hope you enjoyed it. And look, our next show will be Monday. We're going to have a great show. You're going to see Brock Prejean, the head coach of Vermillion Catholic, is our guest for Monday's show. Vermillion Catholic in Abbeville. I think we told every important part about Abbeville. I think we did. Yep. Um, a lot of interesting things. For a small town like Abbeville, a lot of stuff to talk about with Vermillion Catholic and Coach Brock Prejean, the head coach. We'll, we'll see you on Monday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.